Hey, what's going on? It's Arva here, and welcome back to a brand new video today. F1 2018 has been announced today, the 15th of May. Here is the brand new logo, if you were wondering about that, obviously, with the new actual F1 logo itself, and then the new font that uh, Liberty Media have been rolling with. So that's the new logo for this year's game, and up till now, we've had basically no info on the new game whatsoever until now. There's a small press release. There is no trailer or screenshot. Um, we've been told that those are coming very soon. Hopefully that is within like a week or two weeks time. Obviously E3 is only a month away. Codemasters have gone to E3 uh, for like the last couple of years. They've done a small little showing on the show floor. Um, so I'm assuming that a trailer and screenshots would drop before then because, I, you know, F1 can't compete with the huge games at E3. So uh, it doesn't make any sense to kind of get drowned out by other big games at E3, so I'd imagine a trailer and screenshot will be dropped, you know, hopefully within a week or two weeks time or whatever like that, so do get subscribed if you are new around here, and uh, as soon as the trailer drops, any new screenshots, any new info, I'll be straight on it, making a video for you guys on that, but for today, Codemasters have just announced F1 2018, shown the new logo off, and they've got a small press release, which we'll go through right now, and try and, you know, read into and kind of get as much info as we can out of it as, as possible. So here we are, looking at the press release that Codemasters has thankfully emailed me over a little bit earlier ahead of time, so thank you to them for doing that. But straight away, we're going to look at that second highlighted part. Friday, 24th August 2018, that is going to be the release date. So, pretty similar to last year, actually. You know, for the last couple of years, the release dates have been going back and back and back ever since they moved it to that early July release back in F1 2015. And it's been moving, you know, backwards, basically, back to almost what was the September, mid-September, late September release of the old games when they st uh, first started to make the these games uh, from F1 2010. So same sort of release to last year's game. So kind of semi-surprising because I really thought and a lot of people, you know, talked to them, thought that the game was going to release later in the year because of that kind of pattern. And also up till now, as I said, there's been no news on the game. So we're all kind of uh, kind of second guessing that, okay, there's been no news. There's been no alpha testing this year. You know, no YouTubers or community members got invited to test the offline part of the game early uh, like we did uh, last two years so it was kind of almost a second guess of okay maybe they're kind of delaying stuff maybe it's taking them more time to make the game they are going to be doing some beta testing in the next couple of weeks there's actually a form you can fill out to sign up to beta test I'll leave that in the description or if I don't remind me in the comments below but um yeah I mean they, they've done things a little bit differently um compared to last year in terms of the way they're relaying information but uh anyway let's get into it so the first kind of major thing is immersing players into the world of Formula One more than ever before that's good to hear so they're still you know, going for that immersion factor, which, you know, I've been a little bit skeptical of this year. Obviously, they're pushing F1 esports quite heavily in their marketing approach. Codemasters and F1, the, the, the real life sport themselves, are, you know, definitely pushing F1 esports quite a lot. So I was a little bit worried they were kind of going to start neglecting all the big parts of the game to do with the offline stuff and just focus on the multiplayer. And obviously, immersion doesn't really go hand in hand with making a better multiplayer, it kind of goes more in hand in hand with making a good offline experience. So, so they're still mentioning immersing players into the world of Formula 1 more than ever before, which is great to hear. So we're going to move on then to further building on such a strong starting point with F1 2018, engaging heavily with our fan base. They took a few surveys um, like a, I want to say like a couple of months ago, or maybe a month or two ago, uh, based on, on Twitter and whatnot, on social media, they posted out and basically a lot of you guys could fill out a form and a survey. I'm pretty sure a lot of you would have filled that out if you did not. I think it's a bit too late, but basically they did a survey to try and gauge what the players wanted and so we've been told career mode is going to have a further expansion to immerse players into a deeper world of Formula One. And first of all, that sounds great because like I said, I had a bit of a fear that due to obviously how much F1 Esports was growing and how much attention they themselves were, were pinning onto it, I really thought that career mode, almost like a FIFA and EA style, was just going to get pushed off to the side because that's unfortunately what happened with FIFA and EA in the last couple of years with Ultimate Team growing so much. They pretty much forget about career mode every single year. I was kind of worried that was going to happen this year round due to F1 Esports and maybe a more focus on, on that side of the game potentially, but really at the end of the day, the majority of players still buy the game for career mode. The majority of players that are still playing the game 
throughout the entire year are still all career mode players. So, so it's good to see that although they are definitely focusing a lot on F1 esports in terms of the press release, they're, they're still leading with a bit of a you know note on that career mode is going to be still built upon and expanded further because there are major areas like obviously I've made about three videos now on career mode, uh, career mode ideas. They're, they're definitely not at the near end point of making the career mode as good as it could be. There's still so many things that they could do to actually make it better. Um, so it's not like they're near the, the perfect point of, oh, it's in a good place. Let's leave it alone. There's definitely so much stuff they can still do. So it's good to see they're still going to try and build on it and actually do some new stuff to make it expanded, to make it immersive. And the next thing is, uh, which is really interesting, the return of a highly requested feature back into the franchise. That's interesting. That's definitely interesting. So before I go on to say my theory, I want you guys to pause the video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think the return of a highly requested feature back into the franchise could be. Because there's a lot of definitely there's a lot of things that I think you guys as a community have kind of said. You know, every time we bring up game ideas, there's definitely a couple that keep cropping up. But to me, a highly requested feature back into the franchise. You know, every time I make a video about the new game and like a game idea video, the one thing I feel like always comes up consistently is the interviews from F1 2010 and 2011. Like that nostalgic feature that worked really well to immerse you in the world of Formula 1 back in F1 2010 and 2011 to some extent, but they kind of watered it down for 2011. Um, for 2010, it kind of played a small factor into the way teams uh, perceived you because they wa there was that really old kind of very simple reputation level in F1 2010 where they had those circles that got filled up and kind of like a pie chart and if you answered correctly the pie chart would kind of fill up and that could maybe kind of hint towards what kind of teams were available to sign for in the next season of career mode. But like I said, pretty much every time we as a community discuss game ideas for career mode, that is always something that crops up is the interviews, the immersion of the interviews, having that paddock feel. So I, I think personally that's going to be it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And actually, funnily enough, if they're bringing that back, and like I said in a previous video, if they're going to bring stuff back, they should bring it back in a meaningful way and a much more refined way. If they are bringing back the interviews, I would hope they're going to bring it back in a way, which is a, a kind of a way I touched upon in a, in a previous video about the way they can make the interviews work in with like contract stuff. You know, the answers you give to the interviews will directly affect, you know, a, a lot more than it has done ever in the past pass on F1 2010 and 2011, you know, what teams are available. And that could really play into the way you play for contracts with new teams and, you know, what kind of role you get, like first driver, second driver. If, you, if you're if you really, you know, positive about a team, then you could get a contract as a first driver straight away if you're really positive in interviews. If you're not so much and you're a bit iffy-iffy, if you do sign on the team, maybe it's just the second driver role or equal footing, uh, that might pl play into it. Or it might even play into an R&D bonus if you sign onto the team and you've been really positive. You know, a lot of different ways they could play it. And if that is indeed the thing they're going to be bringing back, which is highly requested, I would hope that they're going to bring it back in a really meaningful, refined way, rather than just a nostalgia trip of, oh, it's like F1 2010, where the interviews were there, but they didn't really mean that much. It was more of just a kind of aesthetics thing as you went on from session to session. So hopefully they are going to bring it back in a, in a more meaningful way, if indeed that is the thing. Obviously, it could be. I could be wrong. There could be something I'm missing because I can't really think of off the top of my head what else has really been highly, highly requested that was bef was in an F1 game before. Because the, the key word is feature back into the franchise. So. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about that. And then the next point, adding more classic cars into the game. Again, listening to our fans, to which of the historical cars would they, would they uh, want to most virtually drive in the game. So that was another part of the survey they did. Was part of the survey, they basically asked what kind of new cars, what era of cars would you guys like to see. So that was part of the survey. So they definitely, it's good to see they've actually directly listened to that survey to actually inform them what cars they should go out and get. And it's good to see that they're going to keep the classic cars and add to them because what happened last time they had classic cars in F1 2013 is they got the licensing for all of it and then for F1 2014 they just got rid of the licensing so it's good to see they're actually going to keep and keep paying for the licenses which I imagine can't it's not a diff, it's not a, it's not an easy thing you know getting the licenses for all the different sponsors for all the classic cars it's got to be a quite a tough thing so kudos to them for actually keeping that on I personally didn't play a lot of the classic cars on this year's game like I didn't with F1 2013 I'm sure I think a big factor of that is obviously 
obviously I got into Formula 1 a little bit later than maybe the fans that would enjoy the classic car, so I don't have as much of a nostalgia trip for the classic cars as, uh, say, some older F1 fans might, uh, but for those, you know, those those guys who do have that kind of nostalgia factor, it's a good thing that they're going to keep it in and add to it, and hopefully they add it in in a bit more of a meaningful way, perhaps, into the career mode, because I feel like after the first season of the, uh, of the kind of classic car events, it kind of got a bit too samey-samey, so hopefully they, if they're going to add more classic cars into the game, hopefully they've worked on actually having a variety of different tasks from season to season in career mode, where the classic cars are used, and it's not just the same kind of copy and paste over the seasons the seasons and then finally and then finally they said outside those headlines many other great enhancements to be revealed before the game launches obviously that just means all the usual kind of marketing stuff up until august so we don't know i would really bet a lot on one of those features and great enhancement enhancements is going to be a lot to do with multiplayer because as much as this press release is pretty much only mentioned offline like career mode classic cars and the release date I really heavily suspect they're going to go a lot in on, e on, on the F1 esports side. So I would imagine very, very soon, within a month or two, one of those great enhancements, it's going to be something to do with the multiplayer system, whether it's a, a better spectator system, a better matchmaking system, a new lobby system to do with multiplayer. I would imagine that. But for me, I was having a bit of a panic, a panic attack, honestly, over the winter because of how heavily they went in on F1 esports. I was kind of worried that they were pretty much going to leave career mode to just basically be the same as 2017 so it's really reassuring to me as a career mode player that they're going to be still working on it they're you know clearly going to expand it further try and bring that immersion factor even more because they did a they did a fantastic job from 2016 to 2017 to up the immersion with the you know new r&d system and you know everything that went with the new career mode and it's good to see they're going to build on it i would say if any of the people from code masters lee madder paul gill you know any of the community managers from cody's are watching this video in terms of the career mode and the r R&D, I really beg that they've tweaked how the R&D works in terms of the speed and rate of upgrades for the AI. You know, I think a lot, I think not only me, but a lot of you guys as well would agree that in 2017, the AI didn't do enough R&D upgrades. It was a bit too slow as well, whereas 2016 was too fast. So they almost need to hopefully find a new balance from 2016 to 2017, find a middle ground for F1 2018, where the AI upgrading, the players upgrading, it's not uber fast like 2016 but it's not the case of I'm in season 7 and the McLaren Honda who I've not driven for yet in the career mode is still as slow as they, as, as they were in the pecking order of season 1 so just a little note on that I really hope they've also worked on tweaking stuff that, 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 that was already there rather than just adding stuff on and hopefully they've looked back into 2017 and tweaked stuff that was already there and then pretty much the rest of the press release is just some kind of jargon about you know the, the season so far obviously it's, it's meant for a variety of people to read so obviously this will be for people who are maybe not familiar with Formula One or just kind of the, the kind of more established news outlets that want to do that kind of piece but they bring up a good point French Grand Prix German Grand Prix on just a little note I'm excited for those to come back especially the German Grand Prix Hockenheim I really enjoyed Hockenheim on F1 2016 so it's gonna be really awesome to have that back on the 2018 game especially with the new 2018 downforce you know Hockenheim was already fun with the 2016 cars but can you imagine that track now with the high downforce so that's gonna be pretty damn sweet you know turn one gonna be epic the stadium section in sector three that's gonna be cool and then the french grand prix i mean maybe some of you guys will will have experienced the french grand prix circuit um but i never have so it's gonna be pretty cool to see that circuit in action on an f1 game and as well as real life but to have that in the game is also a pretty sweet thing in terms of like you know the, the excitement that's just two new tracks because un unfortunately with f1 unlike games like forza or need for speed or other racing games obviously because it's revolving around a real sport it's very hard to get a major major additional difference every year with like the career mode in terms of like uh, what your drive what the driving experience is like apart from the new cars obviously there's not a lot you can do so it's always fun when the real life sport has new circuits or old circuits coming back and that is and obviously that's going to affect the game with the, with the, with the tracks being in the game so i'm looking forward to Hockenheim being back and uh definitely going to be interested to checking out the french grand prix circuit but that is it that is the news release not too much as you can clearly see just a lot of a uh, kind of waffle at the end um but that is the news release for F1 2018. Make headlines in F1 2018. I don't know if that is the that is the slogan, because obviously for F1 2017, it was make history, which was uh, kind of ironically the same headline I gave my driver 2017, wink wink, but make headlines. I don't know if that's going to be the slogan, 
it's it's pretty okay. I mean, I mean, it's not my personal favorite, but make headlines, whatever. But yeah, that's the that's the release date. That's the kind of news so far. As I said, if you are new around here, do get subscribed because as soon as they drop a trailer, screenshots, any kind of news, I will be straight on it, making a video for you guys to inform you. So get subscribed for all your F1 2018 news in the future. But uh, yeah, guys, if you're liking the news of F1 2018, you're liking the release date, whatever, like the logo. <laughs> whatever the case, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, do get subscribed, as I said. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.